Hi guys, I am Dr. Neha and today we will discuss about carbon ecological and water footprint. So people used to say that you need to reduce your carbon emissions and uh, the carbon dioxide uh, emission should be reduced, carbon footprint should be reduced. But nobody tell us how to do that and basically how to calculate and what are they. So let us start the video today with carbon footprint. Basically it is total amount of greenhouse gases which is produced directly and indirectly directly because of the human activities whatever we do and equivalent uh, co2 with respect to that direct and indirect actually is expressed in terms of co2 terms of co2 means there are other greenhouse gases also but then co2 is taken as a reference so carbon footprint is nothing but the sum of all emissions of co2 which is induced by our activity in a given time frame most probably the time period is always a year. So the carbon footprint measures that impact which these activities have on the environment and that is in terms of the greenhouse gas produced and we calculate that total gas in unit of CO2 equivalent. Now coming to the calculations basically when you calculate you have to calculate it uh, either like you may calculate it for individual or a particular day when you uh, organize one event and you say that for so and so date or for so and so event uh, we will calculate the carbon footprint or it could be an organization based uh, let's say x company uh, footprint of a particular company or service place etc so when uh, you calculate all these things it could be an individual also let's say i want to calculate the carbon footprint of mine for one day so that also can be done for one family for one event for any organization the only thing which you have to do in order to do that is to find out what are your direct emission sources and what are your indirect emission sources or indirect impact let me uh, simply uh, like tell you like indirect impacts are also there and for that you need to, to you know have a quick, quick exercise i have found this uh, calculator which is very good calculator it's available on the web and any one across the globe uh, can fill their details there and can calculate uh, the individual carbon footprint for other countries like us uk there are other websites available but for indian i think we uh, can easily prefer this cup and there they calculate the carbon footprint at the same time they give you some measures also they work in carbon offset so like if you cannot reduce your carbon footprint if you cannot change your lifestyle you can give that much amount to one company and on your behalf they are going to reduce the carbon footprint they go simple see si uh, lifestyle hamari hai let's say we are non-vegetarian and we are eating meat and now we have to reduce the use of meat uh, in order to reduce the carbon footprint right yeah up uh, normally junk khate hai. Uh, you don't prefer eating roti and all but you prefer eating uh, sandwiches means bread or burger and all so kya hoga these junk have their carbon uh, footprints their co2 emission because if it is a crop if you directly eat that then you have to calculate the carbon footprint direct and indirect and uh, let's say if it's a bread so what is the indirect footprint that first uh, the wheat will be uh, there then you crush the wheat you get a flour fair uh, transportation lagega the flour to the company then to the baking uh, company then their temperature will be increased baking thing will be done which of wapas bread banegi to first transportation uh, lagega waha fuel use hoga uh, that will go to the market then you will go to the market with uh, the help of your two wheeler or four wheeler and you will also like your fuel also will emit carbon dioxide and then you will bring that bread home so now you imagine if you use one bread as your breakfast how much co2 emissions you have done daily right so what they do they do calculation of your daily routine now if i cannot change the sequence let's say i cannot avoid bread i cannot avoid meat right so then what i can do i can offset it uh, carbon credit and cdm is another thing on which i have already made a video you go and watch how the companies trade that basically it's a stock kind of thing it's a trading certificate carbon credit or uh, in fact cer you can uh, sell them you can buy them just say, abhi uh, mera ek limit hai x, right? But I am exceeding x. 
what i can do to reduce it to uh, y to reduce it to x from y uh, let's say some 10 tons amount of co2 is required to be reduced mujhe 10 ton kam karna hai lekin main apni lifestyle change nahi kar sakti to what i'll do i'll offset it main kisi company ko bol dungi ki bhai itna equivalent co2 emission aapko kam karna hai what they will do on my behalf they will plant trees or they will use renewable sources or different different mechanisms they will do so that that much co2 emission is reduced so simple si baat hai agar hum nahi kar sakte hain to hum utna pay kare offset kare aur koi aur hamari tarah kare hamari uh, behalf par kare right so there are uh, basically uh, it's a detailed approach and systematic uh, approach is required advice is required but it is actually difficult right so what we can do is we can daily do that that uh, you find out your direct factor what is your direct consumption of energy ki aap agar car se ja rahe hain to you take a two wheeler or if it is possible go for cycle or then go for a walk right so don't take those vehicles that is direct consumption of energy but then there are indirect energy consumption also jaise maine abhi aapko ek example diya bread ka so that is an indirect factor energy used in manufacture of the things that we consume because uh, that is made in the factory then after transportation they come to your place and all so if you see the carbon footprint uh, with respect to global level india is contributing much but not that much with respect to developed countries because their lifestyle is totally different they use dishwasher they use ac they use washing machine every time uh, heater in the uh, buildings and all we uh, normally rely on sunlight uh, for you know drying up our clothes and all so still uh, we do our work on our own we do have a walk we don't have so much of the cars in us there are so much of the cars and all so daily consumption of these fuel is less that is why even though we are so much populated our carbon footprint is not that much but that is not a matter of you know pride or happiness because we also have to contribute towards the global thing and we should reduce that and if you imagine uh, if you see major uh, problem is with using transport when we use transport the carbon footprint is maximum if you go by aeroplane then it decreases when you go by you know car then uh, bike or bicycle and all and different different daily lifestyle work also consumes carbon uh, footprint uh, and if you see per capita emissions so in india it's not that problematic but then we are in between and that is because our area of uh, you know uh, like area is less and population is more so how do you reduce the carbon footprint at no cost energy like you don't want to uh, give uh, like any cost uh, for reducing that so first of all you promote energy awareness to all employees uh, turn off the light when not in use unplug battery chargers when not in use maximize the use of daylight do not turn lights when the daylight is okay remove instructions from radiator turn off heating when the doors are open etc etc or what you can do use only cold water sometimes for your laundry try skipping a trip to the store shop online in fact uh, video call your friend rather than uh, going there at the home and visit so at least avoid those frequent visits so that the transportation will not be there and you will save carbon dioxide emission so in fact this particular thing was a blessing in disguise in last one and a half year when it was pandemic and people were not me moving they were there at their home so we could easily balance that carbon uh, footprint uh, you can have carpooling uh, go one week without using disposable cups turn off the lights reduce your bottled water consumption cut your shower time by two minutes etc etc so this is what without cost now if you can afford some low to medium cost in reducing that so you replace all the lamps with low energy version led versions the conversion is more don't use bulbs uh, consider installing uh, movement and daylight sensors dot proof windows ensure boilers are maintained and long term investment plans are also there when you have to consider installing the micro generation at your premises or you replace the single glazed window with double glazing if you choose energy efficient equipments and you replace the old boiler with the new one uh, install proper insulation in the ceiling etc etc so coming to the next one is ecological footprint what we have seen so far is a carbon footprint ecological footprint is basically the impact of human activity in terms of area of biologically productive land and water which is required to produce the resources consumed by human and to assimilate the waste generated so we do consume some amount of land and area let's say i eat uh, four rotis a day so for that how much wheat is required 
and that wheat uh, might have grown on some land and some kind of water consumption was also there so for me uh, eating four roti might have uh, used uh, like that much land and water right and now if i uh, you know uh, waste one roti right and then and if i waste it and then i dispose that waste so that dumping site that area uh, which is covered by that particular waste will also come in my uh, uh, ecological footprint so basically it is area per person global hectare per person and it is the area of land and water required for both of the things first is to supply you whatever you need and second is to assimilate the waste you generate so both of the things either you reduce the waste or you reduce your total consumption then only you are going to help uh, the mother nature in fact if you go by the calculation some people say that uh, with the help of it you will be able to know how much virtual planet earth is needed because as of now if you calculate per person area which is required i think we would need around more than 10 planet earth to accumulate or assimilate this much waste and produce that much land and water as per the theoretical calculations so ecological footprint measures how fast we consume resources and also generate waste so both of the things we have to take care of right it is it has nothing to do with how fast nature can absorb our waste because nature has its own capacity we have to take care of how fast we consume the resources right so basically carbon footprint and ecological footprints are uh, connected to each other carbon footprint is probably an extension of the concept of ecological footprint uh, if you see carbon footprint it measures co2 uh, which is generated by the activity while ecological uh, measures both renewable and non renewable resources used so carbon footprint only includes the carbon emission number while this include both carbon emission also and its impact on environment because of waste we to calculate kar rahe ho na so it can be used for carbon credit marketplace right and it used to gauge global consumption it has a direct impact on climate change while this directly impacts continuing life on earth because both of the things are uh, included here right so ecological footprint is also a problematic figure continuing with again the differences uh, carbon footprint uh, is here and ecological footprint is here so i just got this uh, image somehow and i just pasted so ecological footprint covers all activities right while carbon footprint only consider the activity which contribute to greenhouse gas so that is why you uh, calculate the co2 emission in tons per year while ecological footprint uh, gives you area per person so area including land and water carbon footprint aims to reduce the impact on the environment by reducing global warming or greenhouse gas while ecological footprint has a better or a bigger approach which aims for sustainable development now there is third more term which is bio capacity it's basically the capacity of ecosystem to produce useful and biological like useful biological material and to absorb waste material generated by humans so whatever uh, schemes or technologies you have it is overall capacity of your uh, mother earth to generate that right so let's say the requirement ecological footprint is your requirement which you require based on your consumption and based on your waste how much area you require while bio capacity is how much area we all we have in reality how much area we have so if the area we have is more and the requirement is less then we are ecological creditor but india is ecological debtor because if you understand our ecological footprint is more understand this factor our carbon footprint is less individually carbon dioxide emission is less but ecological footprint is very high why because it's area per person now you imagine our population and if you go ahead with it obviously your area required would be more and what area we already have in india is less so bio capacity wise in us it would be like area more and population comes so the requirement is sufficing their creditor but we are debtor 
I hope you got this point. If you are liking this video, please do hit on like that will give me motivation and do subscribe to my channel if you are new to it. Continuing to UNCOP 26 summit, by we uh, our uh, honorable prime minister have committed many things and they present Amrit Tatwu from India. Uh, basically, they said that India will complete its 50% energy requirement by renewable energy by 2030. Also, one of the focus was on reducing its carbon intensity which is ratio of greenhouse gas emission produced to GDP. So they say that we are going to reduce it to below 45%. That's a nice initiative. And a second, by 2070, we will achieve net zero target. What is net zero is the balance between amount of greenhouse gas produced and the amount removed from the atmosphere. So net zero is when you remove more amount, then you produce the amount. So we target that we are going to produce less greenhouse gas emission with respect to the amount removed. Coming to uh, the next one is last one is a water footprint. Nowadays, uh, you will not find much of the content anywhere. So I think uh, you'll be able to revise these things in a proper manner and in one presentation. So let us go ahead with water footprint. It is a measure of human appropriation of freshwater resources means how much water I require, simple si baat hai. So blue WF, green and grey, there are three types of water footprint, right? Blue water footprint refers to the consumption of blue water resources like ground and surface water or whatever I use is a blue water footprint. While if I use rain water, that's a green water footprint. And uh, obviously there are three main sources of water, rain, uh, surface and ground. So if you are using surface and ground water, your footprint uh, will be in uh, blue. So water footprint, uh, if it is rain, then it is green. Gray water footprint is indicator of how much pollution you are creating. Because you are going to consume some amount of fresh water, which is required to assimilate the pollutant, which you have created. So it's not only about uh, utilizing the water, it's about utilizing the water for absorption of your uh, pollutants also. So even if you, you know, uh, reduce the water pollution, you're going to reduce the grey water footprint and that will help us survive, right? Coming to the revision of all the uh, terms, biocapacity is biologically productive area which is available to provide the resources we use and to absorb our waste. So whatever area is available for us is biocapacity. Footprint is a length and water area needed to produce the resources and absorb. So this is nothing but ecological footprint, right? What is required needed to produce this and to absorb this is ecological footprint. Ecological deficit obviously when the ecological footprint exceeds the biocapacity right so you require more so obviously you become creditor and ecological reserve is when the bio capacity is more and your requirement is less so that is obviously a good condition that you have enough of the reserve with you and then there is more term which is ecological overshoot day that is actually the date when the humanity demand and uh, service is given in one year exceed what earth can regenerate in that year imagine earlier it was like uh, let's say uh, if you uh, like have X amount which is given to you for one year. Earlier you were used to use it. That resource you were used to use in one year. And dheere dheere wo kam ho gaya to 11 months to 10 months. I think lastly it was August 31st. So what does that mean? That means that is the overshoot day. Means whatever resources we are supposed to consume in one year. Actually we are consuming it in the first eight months what about the rest four five months that is what the overshoot day so we have to increase the overshoot day also and we have to use the resources uh, for complete one year right so coming to the last slide let us uh, revise the things what is carbon footprint is related to the co2 emission in terms of co2 emission only Ecological footprint, it measures the area per person. So land and water required for a human 
for the consumption of natural resources at the same time uh, for absorbing the waste we generate water footprint is basically related with the volume of water consumption and the pollution uh, and locations like we utilize so i think with that uh, you are able to understand all of the things carbon footprint ecological footprint and water footprint and you are able to differentiate between them also so uh, just mention in the comment how do you like it and if you have any doubts please mention in the comment uh, do like share and subscribe thank you so much for being here